G'day watchers, welcome back to the channel. What I want to do today in, in this particular video is just put a side by side of these Seiko Divers 200 meter watches. Now all of these are sub 400, that's what I've titled the video, but ostensibly depending on the variants you get, particularly of these two slightly more expensive ones, they're really sub $300, at least on original retail in some of the versions uh, that you could get. It, it, you're really looking at the sub $300 mark, uh, I think. Um, so, you know, these are Seikos, of course, uh, and I'm, I'm just putting them side by side. They're not all the same. Uh, of course, there's a, there's a couple of levels here, uh, but, you know, I thought it'd be useful and instructive to just compare these very popular divers, you know. So on the left here, we have my SKX007 on bracelet. You know, such a much loved watch. Um, you know, it doesn't have a nickname like the others, uh, but you know, it, it's here representing uh, the lower end of the tier. Uh, in the middle here is a Seiko Turtle. This is the SRP A21, uh, the Paddy uh, collaboration version uh, representing the turtle shape. Uh, and then on the left is the Monster. This is the SRP 309 orange monster of course uh, representing uh, this very very popular shape the monster uh, with in this version the second generation you can see the teeth on the dial now i wish i could get um, a, a tuner uh, to compare but but i don't have a tuner so you know we're just gonna have to make do without uh, and then and then slightly higher up of course is the sumo but that that's really getting uh, above this price level i think so all, all these are uh, dive watches meaning that they have the dive features. They all have uh, the screw down crowns at the uh, four o'clock position. You can see on all these uh, watches, uh, they all have 120 click unidirectional rotating bezels with, with minute markings on all of these. Uh, and they all have great loom. They all have Lumibrite and really does perform very well in all the loom shots and tests that I've done. A 316L steel for all of these uh, watches. Uh, and they are all, of course, ISO 6425 compliant. They all have Divers 200 at the 6 o'clock position, as uh, you will see when we look at the dials. Uh, movements, all right, they are all Japanese, of course, 21600 beats per hour. Uh, day and date complication, all of them have day and date at the 3 o'clock window that you can see there. Uh, and they all standard have uh, hard lex crystal. All of these are Seiko hard lex, which you know, in, in my reading and experience is a little bit better than standard mineral glass that you might get in, uh, I guess, run of the mill watches. The bracelets are, are all steel and they all have pin fastening. None of these have uh, screws that fasten the bracelets. Okay, so let's get into it. To start with, uh, you know, my Seiko SKX007, you know, the much loved 007. Um, this is listed originally at an MSRP of 450, but really you can still get all stock. This uh, I don't think is under production run anymore, uh, but you can still get all stock at just above uh, around the 200 USD mark. Where is it made? Well, uh, all of these watches are made either in Japan itself or uh, as a subsidiary country, often China or Southeast Asia somewhere. Uh, the J versions uh, are for the JDM market. Typically, I think are made in Japan, but they're not, uh, as I understand it, always made in Japan. So just be aware uh, when you're comparing J versus K market. K doesn't mean Korea. K just means it's made for a foreign uh, export market. All right, so the case diameter here, 42.5 millimeters. It is uh, 30 millimeters thick, and you can see that lovely uh, SKX case design here. Really, you know, you can see why this watch is so loved. Just the craft that they've put into the case. 137 grams is the adjusted weight, meaning after I've taken out links to fit my 17 centimeter wrist, it is 137 grams, the lightest of this watches. The movement in this case is the older 7S26. It's been around for nearly 20 years now, I think, and it really uh, just seems to have bulletproof reliability, not serviced for many years uh, in many instances and reports. And in this case, this watch, of course, also hasn't been serviced. It's been going on for uh, several years now, as I understand it. This is second hand that I bought. Um, now, this particular movement has a power reserve that's rated at 40 hours. It's 21 joules. Uh, just to note, this does not 
hack and wine, unlike the other two counterparts here. Okay, so really that's where we are at, at this uh, watch, you know, at the back I can show you that they have hollow end links on the bracelets there, so it's not solid. And then the class, just like a, a lot of these other ones, is pressed metal. Um, you know, not not nothing more than that. This one, uh, I think, might not be an original bracelet. It does have a pin, uh, a button release, and a secondary fastener there, but it does not have a dive extension. And I think I'm pretty sure the original SKX does not have a dive extension. You know, so. It, matte black dial. It's got the arrow and syringe hands uh, that has you know made this watch quite recognizable and many other Seiko uh, dive models. And in this case, a black bezel steel insert. All right, so there we go. That's the Seiko SKX double zero seven there. All right, moving on to the Paddy Turtle. And thank you again, uh, Graham, uh, local enthusiast who has made this available. Uh, for me to do videos on that uh, has been much appreciated. Now this is the Paddy Turtle, um, MSRP is 550 USD. Uh, you can kind of get it at around the 300 uh, or just above mark. Uh, but as a comparison, uh, you can get other variants of the Turtle, the current Turtle for cheaper. So for example, the SRP775, uh, black dial, black bezel with gold. Uh, lettering and marking. You can get that for around uh, 245 I've just done an eBay search and that's that's really the price that came up. Um, you know, similar uh, ideas of uh, whether it's a JDMJ model or a foreign market K model, you can find the variants and the markings that denote that. This is the largest watch here. This is 45 millimeters across. It is uh, also the thickest. It's 13 0.4 millimeters thick and an adjusted weight is 176 grams and you really do feel this on the wrist uh, that's uh, the heaviest watch as well as the largest watch for r36 movement you know you've heard me go on about this enough it's 41 hours power reserve 24 jewels so so slightly more reserve slightly more jewels than the seven the old 7s 26 and it also does hack and does manual wind when you uh, when you pull the crown out. Uh, the loom, uh, you know, and the glass. We've talked about that. Uh, the difference here uh, for the slight increase in price, you're getting a larger case, a larger watch, a newer movement, and you're getting solid uh, bracelet end links there. And and you know you don't see the the spring bar uh, uh, holes there because pleasingly this has drill lugs which. Uh, really people rave on about people really like uh, drew lux because <laughs> it's so convenient you can just get a paper clip and be careful with it you can actually remove the spring bars you don't need any more fancy tools than that um, so the bracelet here um, is a similar quality you know again the weakest points here seem to be uh, the bracelets but this one does have a dive extension that i've demonstrated before in the review Right, so that's that's it. Uh, blue sunburst down in this particular variant, but of course it comes in the, the different variants that you can get today. Uh, and the hands uh, are essentially the same hands as the SKX 007 and other variants. Uh, the, the, the difference here is that this one has the red minute hand to go with the bezel and the paddy theme of this watch. And then this one specifically has the Pepsi bezel, uh, blue and red, of course, as you can see already from a distance. Okay, and then lastly, just going up to my monster, the SRP309 Seiko Orange Monster, no longer in production, and price seems to be appreciating, particularly if you can get a uh, mint condition brand new one. Uh, now, original list price, as far as my research has gone, it was 595 USD. Uh, this particular model, the 309, you're going to have to look at around 400 plus. Maybe you're lucky if you can get it around the 400 USD on the secondary market. Uh, I guess depending on the condition, you might get it a bit cheaper, of course. Uh, just as a, a comparison to show that this exact model in different clothing. So, for example, the SRP311, you can still get for around 240 USD. Uh, the, the 311, of course, is... Uh, uh, black PVD treated orange black monster and I'll try to put a 
intersperse uh, picture here to show. So, you know, like I think different variants, uh, you know, same watches in different clothing, you can get it for nearly the same price, around the 240, 250 mark for, for either of these models. This one just happens to be uh, the most expensive one here because it, it just has a fanatical following. People love it and uh, they, they are paying for it on secondary market. 42.5 millimeters across in the case, 13 millimeter thickness. Uh, and in this case, it's 166 grams adjusted weight. So slightly lighter than the Turtle, uh, but definitely uh, substantially heavier than the SKX. Uh, both for the Turtle and the Monster are heavier watches. Uh, the same movement as the Turtle, the 4R36. Uh, in this case, you're also getting solid end links. There is uh, the space there for a spring bar that you want to use with this watch, but it also has the drilled lux that you can see there on the side. So you've got the options there. Uh, I personally like to use the drilled lug holes, of course, it's just, just that much easier. Um, so, you know, I've shown you the, the bracelet is really the same uh, in terms of the clasps. Uh, it's pressed metal there uh, with a dive extension that's almost identical to the uh, turtle bracelet. Uh, you're getting the orange monster dial in this version, or you're getting the monster pattern, you know, that teeth, that aggressive lamprey mouth uh, teeth set there, uh, the, the monster style hands with a sweeping uh, arrow for the hour, and you're getting a solid steel bezel, you know, there is no insert on this bezel, it is a solid piece that you can see uh, as I pan it around here, so it is the most solid feeling bezel for sure, on any of these uh, particular models. And, and just a, a note, the lugs are 20 millimeters across. And if you put it next to the SKX, you know, it, it's very interesting, the illusion of design. You know, I, I think the monster really just pops out and, and feels and looks like a larger watch, even though it, they are both 42.5 across, you know, then that, that goes down to design, the, the, the bezel, you know, the, the lug width, uh, meaning that it, it makes the bracelet look slightly smaller, I think, just where it attaches, uh, and the lug to lug uh, distance as well, you know, just, just very interesting and instructive comparison here to show that how uh, design can, I guess, really give an impression to the eye when you look at the watches. So, you know, that's the overall, um, I guess, coverage of these three extremely popular watches uh, in, in their different guises and shapes. You know, what, what can I say individually? Well, I think the SKX is definitely the most versatile. It is the lightest. It is the quietest in terms of the design. It is, I guess, in a, in a way, the most conservative. So really, uh, I think for an everyday watch, for most, uh, I guess, suitable for a wide degree of occasions, that, that really uh, fits the bill. The Monster, uh, really, I think, overall, um, is my favorite, really. It, you know, it, it, it really uh, has that overbuilt design. It's aggressive. Um, it, it's, you know, it is a fan favorite. Uh, and I think overall, you know, looks-wise, and to pick one of these as uh, a go-to in terms of what I really like, uh, it's going to be the Monster. It's just so over the top. Uh, the, the paddy, you know, the paddy turtle you know, or any turtle, I think, in my opinion anyway, just, just the feel I get of these watches, I think functionally this is the best diver. It, it, it's got the most, I think, uh, I guess the largest case and probably uh, the most solid as evidenced by its weight. Uh, and it's also got the most functional bezel. And it, this one clicks around better than the SKX. Uh, and it, it's easy, it's, it's got bigger grips, and I think it just turns around and functions better. It's also got a slightly more loom area than the SKX, and probably quite comparable to the Monster uh, in terms of the sheer uh, amount of loom. Uh, the Monster, the, the bezel is, is actually hard to turn, right? You really have to get your grip onto it. So I think functionally, it, it, it just, uh, I guess, it gets edged out slightly by the turtle there. So functionally, I think this is the best uh, dive watch, you know. So there we have it. That's my thought about, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, kind of these fit in my, uh, I guess in my mind at least. 
I'd like to know what you guys think, you know, if you own these watches, any combination of uh, the three or all three, let me know your thoughts, your experiences. Um, you know, give us a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to keep in touch. And as always, I will see you guys next time.